So in this video, I'm going to briefly go over the first encounter in the vow of the Disciple Raid, which is the acquisition. Hopefully you'll find it useful, and I'm not going to try to make it too long, but I will make it thorough enough where just the casual guardian can pretty easily pick up this encounter. First off, I'll put it in the description, but there are a couple good maps with both the callouts and the map for this room on Raid Secrets, and I'll provide links in the description. As you enter the room, you'll notice that there is both a traveler and a pyramid symbol. Think of those as dark and light. And that will be something that goes throughout this raid. The other thing is there are three zones. If you think about the three zones, each of those zones will have an obelisk. And the obelisk is the thing, again, it looks like an obelisk. Uh, think of ancient Egypt. It'll basically have a bunch of symbols on it. And there'll be a totem. The totem will have three areas where symbols will show up. Those will be next to each other. So there's one at the spawn location, there's one on the left, and there's one on the right. Both red and yellow bar ads will, will spawn near each of those three obelisk locations. The priority should be on the yellow bar ads because the obelisks themselves will fill up over time and wipe your team. But as they take fire, which is either you firing at them or the yellow bar is firing at. The red bars will follow you around, so you definitely want to kill those, but they are not the priority. To start the encounter, you shoot the crux in the middle of the room. This is also something you'll use later on in the encounter. We will talk about doors that you have to open. The doors are normally open after you start the encounter, but they do have a timeout. So if they do timeout and people are trying to go through the doors, make sure you have someone who's within line of sight and can actually shoot the crux again to open the doors. You want to divide your fire team into three groups of two. Now, there's some people are using two groups of three. I think it's easier to use three groups of two on each totem area. One person will be a defender. That person's job is basically to kill ads. The other person will be a runner. The runner will eventually go to the doors. We'll talk about in a second. But will, in addition, try to take the knights on. That will also become a key piece of this encounter. Once you're all in place, then... What you'll see is one of the totems, again, it'll be completely random, is going to light up with either a traveler or a pyramid symbol. This will show you where a knight will show up on the encounter. Again, either on the side with the traveler or the side with the pyramid, which is also the dark and light sides. For the people on the right and left side, the runners, it's going to be very easy to try to look and see if the knight showed up near there. For the person near spawn, they're going to have to do a little bit more looking just because depending on which one shows up, they can be either light or dark. Again, because they're covering both of those areas. So as quickly as possible, have the runners look in their areas and look to see if they see the knight. If they see the knight, take it down as quickly as possible. Once the knight is down, then what's going to happen is you're going to have a second symbol show up on the totem. That second symbol is going to show you which room you need to run into to basically do the next part of the encounter. The person who's the runner should go ahead and run to that room. What they will notice is that in that room, you'll have screebs that spawn, as well as two glyph keepers, which are just basically two large scorn. It's very important at the beginning that you go ahead and get the screebs down as quickly as possible. Once the screebs are down, What's going to happen is back where the defender is watching his totem, you're actually going to see the third symbol show up. The surge symbol is either going to be light or dark. That's going to tell you which glyph keeper to shoot. And it's very important to only shoot one of them. The reason for that is every time you shoot a glyph keeper, an unstoppable champion is going to show up on the outside. And having too many champions, obviously, could overwhelm your team. So it's very important when you get to this phase to make sure the person on the defending plate goes ahead and tells you whether it's light or dark and just take out that one glyph keeper. Going through that is then going to show you a symbol. This is a symbol you need to remember. This symbol is something you're gonna to use to basically advance the encounter. So while you're doing this, the other totems are gonna be doing the same thing. They're going to be finding out where their knight is. Someone's gonna be shooting that knight. Then they're gonna go in kill the Screebs, find out what the color is, whether it's light or dark. They're going to take down their Glyph Keeper and find out the symbol that they need to memorize. Again, all three teams are going to need to do this. Once that is complete, and obviously if you don't do this quickly enough, 
or if the ads do too much da damage to the obelisks, obviously you'll wipe. But once you're done with this, then you'll basically have the three symbols that need to be used to advance the encounter. The problem is, is that only one of the obelisks have all three symbols. They don't need to be shot in a particular order, but only one of them has all three. So it's very important. Again, when the runner actually kills their Glyph Keeper, go ahead and head back and help out where you can, like taking out Knights, or helping the Defender, you know, that way you can kind of advance the encounter quickly. But the other thing you're gonna need to do is to help the Defender look at the Obelisk to see if those three symbols are show up on that Obelisk. If they do, in other words, let's say it's the Spawn Obelisk. If that's the one that has all three of the symbols and you have to shoot them in a fairly quick order, again, not in a particular order, but fairly quickly next to each other, so you prevent wiping. Now you have two chances to do this. If for some reason you mess one up and you have to do it again, it does give you a chance to reset before it wipes the team. If you are successful, you will see the obelisk has accepted your offering. If you don't, you'll see that it rejects your offering. Now there are a couple ways that you can actually shoot the obelisk. Some teams I've seen actually have the three runners go and they get and gather up and they go help out and shoot. I've seen things where just the attack, the defender and the runner do it at the plate. But again, it's fine however you do it. The big thing is you need to shoot those three symbols in rapid succession. You don't have to be super fast because you do have a little bit of time. When we were shooting it, we noticed that, you know, it, we could delay a little bit. But again, I wouldn't want to test that in a real life situation. So you do that and at that point everything resets and you go through the same thing again. So again, key things are taking down your knights and identify them as quickly as possible. Making sure you figure out which is the correct glyph keeper to take down and then memorizing the symbols. Do that three times and you'll finish the encounter. Well, that's the video guys. Hopefully this helps you. I, one thing I can tell you about the raids this season is that they are definitely raids where everyone has to play a role. And if you think about it compared to things like Deepstone Crypt and Vault of Glass that came out you know, last year, those are, those are raids where that was similar where you, a lot of people had to play roles, but you could kind of coast a little bit. You know, you could be carried. What we've seen from the encounters here is that there's really no safe place for folks. And I, I see this encounter as one where a lot of LFG groups are probably going to fail, primarily because people are not gonna know where the rooms are, people are not gonna know what the call-outs are, and they're not familiar with them. And teaching that over time is going to take some time. So what I would say is just be patient with new people. And for new people, just make sure you look at, you basically look online, look for some of the maps because the rooms always stay the same. That's one thing you can, you know, you can definitely, that will help. And the call outs over time, if you memorize the symbols over time, it will make more sense, but it's gonna take reps to kind of get this down. Again, that's a video. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.